Hi everyone, welcome to the studio, it's Martin from Mayor Street Records. Today I'd like to dive into why it's important, well to me anyway, to record an acoustic upright piano and to really enjoy making the piano sound great as well. At the end of the day, it does take time, I completely appreciate that, but I think with the right advice, hopefully, I will give you and um, some techniques and how to edit the piano once you've recorded, you'll be on your way to make some fantastic home or studio recordings um, for your projects. So if this is your first time recording the upright piano, then I'm definitely gonna hopefully help you out. Um, when I first started to record the upright piano, I'll be honest, it was a bit of a challenge. It takes time. So don't beat yourself up if it doesn't work out first time for yourself. The first thing that I always recommend is for you to get to know the sound of your piano. I mean, you might just find that a bit strange to think, you just think a piano is a piano, but I believe each piano has its own personality and the acoustic piano definitely has many. Um, some can sound really bright, some can sound really dull, some can sound really echoey, um, some can sound just bizarre really. Um, it's hard to put it into words. You can kind of um, play all day on different pianos and you'll always get a different tone. So the simple route is play the piano or ask somebody else to play it and listen to it in the room that you're in. Now, this is a really important thing to do because at the end of the day, that's what you're recording, the piano that's in front of you. If you um, think that you're gonna get this fantastic sound or a particular piano sound, um, which your, you know, your favorite band has or artist has, um, if the piano that you're recording doesn't quite have the same tone when you listen to it, the chances are you're not gonna get the same tone in your own recordings. So my advice in the scenario of that, it doesn't sound quite so good in the room that you're in, is to use some acoustic panels or just literally put some furniture around the room to deaden the sound, but also stop the reflections happening, which could kind of destroy your recording in the first place. This will warm up the room, um, which is really the, the tone we go for, isn't it? Warm, soft piano. But it, in theory, that is what the acoustics or furniture placed in your room of recording will do. You know, you'll end up having a much more deader sound, which makes it a bit more cozy to be in as well. So think of that in the same sense of when you record, you wanna make sure those microphones are capturing a cozy, warm sound. Sounds silly, but hey, try it. <laughs> so the next part to recording the acoustic piano is the actual recording chain. Now, I've gone through this before in other videos, but if you're new to this particular video and the recording side, is don't be afraid of the equipment around me. <laughs> Believe me, I don't need this much kit just to record the piano. Um, I do lots of stuff here at the studio, so um, for me, um, it's really important to make sure you don't feel like, oh my goodness, I need to buy loads of stuff. You really don't. The fundamental parts you need for your recording chain to record the acoustic piano, in this case, will be two microphones to record a stereo pair of the actual recording, so a true stereo recording of your instrument. That will then go into a microphone preamp or a sound desk, which also has preamps at the top. Um, you might be familiar more with that. Um, and then from there, you'll be going into the digital world, um, which will involve an interface, and the interface will then go into your chosen um, digital workstation, uh, which would be, in my case, Pro Tools, but you know, there's loads of them, as you know. So the preamp I use is the 1073 by Neve. Um, I particularly like this preamp. Um, for me, it just gives a true sound, and when I come to record, I don't want any, as we'd call it, color on the sound. We want it to sound like what you're recording. Um, and with the 1073, I find it does the job exactly right. Um, there are other preamps, and I won't name and shame, <laughs> um, which I feel change the tone. Um, but really, like a, a good preamp should do, I believe, should be clean and have a natural sound. And not a natural sound of itself, produce a natural sound of what you're recording. 
So from the preamp, I then go into a rather inexpensive interface. So I'm using a Focusrite interface. So I take my line level outputs from my mic pre into the line level inputs of my interface. Now the interface would then go directly via USB-C in this case into my laptop or recording device, which is usually gonna be your laptop or your desktop um, computer to work in your DAW. And in my case, my digital audio workstation is Pro Tools. So at this point, my recording chain is set up but I haven't shown you the microphone side of it yet. So let's go back a bit or let's go to the front of the recording and talk about the piano and also the microphones I'm using for the recordings. So as we know, there are plenty of microphones to choose from in a recording studio. Um, I've been recording 10 plus years now and for me, I'm always learning, I'm always picking up a new idea, a new way, um, but with the acoustic piano, I think I've found the method which works for me at the moment. Um, and for me, it's the AKG C414 microphones, which are condenser microphones, which I place left and right on the piano, um, as equally spaced as possible, and around this sort of distance away from the strings. Um, by having it this sort of distance, I find if I play harder, then it doesn't distort, even if I'm not compressing as I record. Um, they can deal with a lot of high pressure sound level. And so for that reason, I find them really good on essentially, well, the piano is a percussion instrument because of the hammers hitting the strings, which I don't know if you knew that or not, but they work perfectly well for that reason, for playing harder at the same time. They also have a really nice soft presence, so if you play softer, you end up having a much warmer sound as well. Um, bizarre, possibly, but it works. Um, and in this method, where I have the, the microphones left and right, stereo recording, it just picks up a nice round sound, ready to record either a solo part um, for a piano or to record the piano to then eventually place it into a mix with other instruments in a, in a track. One thing that I really like to keep reminding you is that at the end of the day, everyone has a budget and yeah, there are much more expensive microphones than what I've got, but I know there's much cheaper ones as well, which also will do a good job. The key, as I've always found through my career in recording, is use what you have available to you and make the best of it. So what I'm gonna do now is set the levels on the piano, and that basically would mean I'll play, I will then set a good level going into my mic pre, um, so I'm not clipping, I'm hitting a nice, usually around minus six to minus three VU, and then I'm gonna be going into uh, my door and then we're gonna hopefully get a nice recording and I can show you what I do afterwards as well. So let's do that. So I've done the recording. Um, yeah, I played a well-known track from a very well-known movie and uh, yeah, a bit of the entertainer at the end there just to show if I played a bit harder how it would sound as well. Now, the important part about recording the piano is knowing that you have to do a little bit of work on the post as well. As long as you've got a good recording chain and the performance has been, in my case, okay, <laughs> then you can, um, then start to do things with the sound, but only if you need to. So I'm gonna dive into what I do now to edit the recordings that I'd make um, with the upright piano, and it will give you an insight that you don't necessarily need to go crazy with the editing. So let's show you, let me show you that. 
So I've now got the recording coming into the computer. So I've said goodbye to the acoustic piano for now, unless I have to do a load more takes, depending on the project, that's how it kind of works. Um, but I'm in the stage now where I want to edit the sound, um, try and keep it real, but also make it more enjoyable to listen to. Um, I've had a quick listen, obviously, before I pressed record, and I'm happy with the results, but I wanna show you now on the screen um, what I'll do as a kind of a go-to setting, really, um, to make sure that it kind of sounds nice once I've got a full sound, uh, meaning an untreated recording of the, of the actual instrument. So let's have a, a quick look into that. Glasses on. Um, so the first thing I do, as you can see, I've got the two labels, um, piano left, piano right. And I do that deliberately because in a way I am recording the left part of the piano and the right part of the piano. Um, so I'll put up um, a chain and the first thing I go to is an E-channel, which is an SSL Logic plugin. Now you don't have to use this particular plugin I just go to it because I have it, um, but the standard EQ with compression in any DAW will give you the same result, I believe, anyway. So uh, let's just bring these up on both channels. Uh, da -da -da, there we go. And so they're already in the chain, so in a way they've been inserted on the virtual mixer. Um, and then within the mixer also, I would then, so you can see them here, I've got piano left and right. This is my pan pot. I'd also pan left and right. So what that does is instantly goes from two mono recordings, if you like, from two separate microphones, but widens the actual record. And I'll give you a demonstration of what that does now, actually, with the recording itself. Here we go, have a listen to this. and just feels so much nicer. Okay, um, for me, I, you know, on my speakers here, I, I hear a piano and that's what we're going for at the end of the day. <laughs> but I'm also hearing quite a bit of mud. Uh, and by mud, I don't mean the stuff in the field. <laughs> I kind of mean the low end. So my always go to is I want to lose some low end. Um, and I deliberately take out around 80 on my low cuts on each side of the microphone, even the high end. Um, and then I also just sparkle the top slightly uh, with a bit of a high end boost at around 8K. And you know, you might be saying, well, I haven't even listened to it yet, but you have to also remember that I know these uh, monitors. I also know um, the piano. And so I kind of know how it's going to reproduce as well on other systems. So that's kind of an experience thing as well. So as you kind of record, you'll also do the same thing. You'll get to just know your the sound from particular um, instruments that you go to and record quite often. I'll also, as you can see here now, put a light compression with a two to one ratio um, and compress at a threshold at around minus 10. And what that will do is when there are some peaks, which I don't think there were many on this particular, well, the first part anyway, um, it will just duck them slightly so it won't distort if you're on a smaller um, playback system, for example, with a, with a less, more forgiving speaker. Um, so I'll just roll that there. Then I'll give that a playback. that that's or the mixer in this case it's being controlled and 
now we're going into the uh, <laughs> the contrast part. And so, as you can see, there was a bit of a peak reduction even on the loud part, but with the microphone choice, um, it can take quite high pressure levels. The mic preamp that I use certainly has a more, um, well, Neve is analog through and through, so it's a lot more forgiven, forgiving and they like a driven signal uh, just naturally. Now, of course, you have to ensure when you convert that it's gonna sound nice as well. Um, but ultimately, for me, on a first take without any other instruments, I'd be happy with that piano recording and uh, it would be passable <laughs> at this stage. Um, and uh, yeah, I could add a little bit of reverb just to make it a bit wider, possibly. Um, I could maybe look, dive a bit deeper into the actual uh, EQ, maybe look at the lower mids, you know, around 250 to 300, 400, you know, um, and start to find out, are there any frequencies on each particular microphone that could possibly do with either boosting or ducking? Um, but uh, the key really is when you listen back to your recording, um, you do a couple of normal steps that you feel comfortable with with your recording, um, but then leave it, you know, let, let your ears relax as well because you've been playing possibly or you've been listening a lot. Uh, so you might, if you just suddenly just start to dive into just doing stuff just for the sake of doing stuff, you might actually be ruining a perfectly good recording that you've got anyway. Um, so there you go. That's kind of what I do for the uh, editing side on a just to get it sounding where I want it to be initially. So there you go, everybody. I hope this video has given you a bit more of an insight to how to record the upright piano and also what I would do for editing the initial recording. Um, you know, I've always said the most important part about recording music or instruments is that you have to have fun doing it. I really enjoy every moment of recording. Um, I love the, the obviously the, the finished results, but the process is good fun. So, you know, you have to work at it. You have to definitely experiment. It's all trial and error at the end of the day. And the more mistakes you make, the better you will become anyway at recording music and the more confident you'll become because you know it's the mistakes that make us better at what we do. Um, if you like this video I'd really appreciate a subscribe or a like um, and you know uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one and uh, yeah happy recording and take care of yourselves. Cheers, bye.